Um, yeah, I'm just going to try and briefly summarize really broadly. I won't actually really go into any of the detail that's already been we've been through already to today. Uh, just uh, just a quick reminder of of the things that we've seen today. And so we saw a series of talks on the lithospheric architecture of the West Yilgarn. Uh, we've got the, the, uh, the, the passive seismic data as well as the active seismic uh, data, and certainly uh, with these uh, upcoming data sets, it is very clear that the picture and the understanding of the lithospheric architecture of the West Yilgarn Craton will change dra dramatically over, over the, the coming year. We've seen a series of talks on the, the new old ages uh, in the West Yilgarn. Uh, we've uh, identified a new granite suite of 3275 uh, MA in the Naria, which uh, is similar to uh, Tim's oldest uh, rock in the UN Mediterranean, uh, also at 3275 MA. Chris Kirkland's talk on the uh, zircon inheritance preserved in titanite, preserved in a dike in the southwest terrain, uh, a zircon uh, uh, um, indicating basement components in the southwest at 3.44. Uh, GA, uh, um, which was uh, this, this really old component in the southwest terrain is confirmed by uh, Kat, a fantastic work she does uh, in her PhD, uh, where she found uh, migmatites with uh, the oldest component of the migmatites with crystallization ages 3417 MA. And she's also got uh, evidence for probably the oldest uh, migmatization event in, in, the, in the southwest at 3246. Uh, MA, which also saw the coeval emplacement of, of granites. And so if we, if we put these new ages uh, together on a uh, updated time-space plot for the West Gilgan, this is uh, how it would look like. Right, so this would be uh, the, the uh, inherited uh, zircon Chris mentioned. This is Kat's uh, oldest uh, rock in the, in the southwest uh, terrain. And then we go to the 34, 19, 46 uh, granite emplacement. There is also a migmatization event in here. So uh, also conditions for high grade metamorphism. We should add a bar uh, just right under this metamorphic column through here. In the UNB and me and Naria terrain, we've got a similar age now uh, coming at 3275, bringing some of the ages of the Naria terrain a little bit younger, closing that, that data gap in through here. We saw a series of talks as well on the New Yorkian tectonic evolution of the West Yilgarn, particularly looking at shear zones. Uh, Ivan's work on the Yilgarn Craton shear zones and the uh, structural inheritance uh, that uh, we see in uh, uh, younger deformation along the Darling Fault, as well as uh, my work in the Corrigin tectonic zone, uh, where we start to uh, look at uh, crustal thickening and, 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 and exhumation processes happening right at the end of the, of the Archean, in, in the late Neo Archean, uh, that starts to resemble uh, the tectonic processes and orogenic processes that, that look like, uh, uh, that contain some elements of, of uh, proterozoic orogens. Uh, so, a series of talks on the thermal uh, evolution of the West Yilgarn, either derived from the granite data set, as Fona just talked about, and been presented also already from, from by Hugh, uh, but also using traditional uh, PTT uh, modeling uh, studies, as, uh, as shown by Fona as well, uh, and that uh, Tony also alluded to based on uh, Naomi's work. All right, now, um, some future directions for the project. Hughes mentioned uh, that uh, we'll make, collect more granite chemistry to, uh, to increase the granite database, the whole Yilgarn wide granite database. And you'll see that uh, it will have lots of different focuses, and particularly a lithium centric focus. Uh, there is a project uh, just starting up as well on the PG characterization of mafic and ultra mafic intrusions in the project. There's a mafic dye project as well, which will be consisting of mapping mem mental composition through time. There will be the upcoming seismic interpretation workshops uh, sometime during the end of this year or early next year. And we will keep on producing IBGs, interpreted bedrock geology, uh, for uh, these gap areas shown by the yellow and uh, blue um, polygons through there. And, and to do that, we need to go in the field. And this is where we will uh, go this year. These are three, three trips planned for this year, trip one, two, and three. 
uh, to add a lot of uh, data, specifically along the MW2 and MW1 lines, to be able to be in a position to produce uh, IBGs for this region. Um, just mentioning that the TRIP3 there at the boundary between the southern area and the northeast, northwesternmost uh, UN terrain is uh, one of our Archean branch uh, joint trip. And we invite uh, PhD students uh, from university, from uh, PhD students to come uh, if they want to uh, perfection their skills in the field and they want to have the experience of the way we do uh, field geology. Also, towards new IBGs, we have a proposal in line uh, to fly new uh, aeromagnetic and radiometric at 100 meter line spacing uh, over parts of the Naria terrain. Um, here I'm showing three areas. They are by, by order of prioritization and depending on funding, uh, we'll do either one, hopefully one and two. Uh, three is uh, really a tentative. <laughs> All right, and yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you very much.